Uh, today I'd like to talk to you about the subject of forgiveness. Forgiveness. And let me go ahead and give you the outline. Uh, number one, forgiveness is a command. Forgiveness is a command. You're going to see this in Scripture. Number two, forgiveness is letting hurt go. Letting hurt go. And we will be speaking about that in a few minutes. And number three, forgiveness is truly redemption. Truly redemption. You know, when we look at forgiveness, I want to say probably 80% of my counseling has to do with somebody who has or struggles with forgiveness. Okay? And the Word of God teaches us, you know, that uh, you know, we, we can forgive. Uh, Christ is in us. And, you know, everyone that is breathing or has... Everyone that is breathing has been hurt deeply by an action, a harsh word, unfair treatment, hate, breakups, divorce, false accusations, embarrassments, and manipulations. Folks, we've all been hurt. Uh, some people you can talk uh, with and work things out, but others do not care what it did to you and believe that they have done nothing wrong. There is no way they will give an apology. This is where God's forgiveness comes in. And let me give you a definition of forgiveness. Forgiveness is the ability to remove and forget all resentment and attitude against any person or persons that has done you wrong or hurt you regardless of the circumstances. And I hear this word all the time, but, Brother Mike, you haven't heard my story. Folks, I have heard every story there is. And God still tells us we as Christians need to forgive. I know some of you have just thought that's not going to happen because I've heard people voice that. Uh, before you get defensive, please allow me to present what the Bible says about forgiveness. Just hear us out and then, then you can draw your own conclusion. We're going to start in Colossians chapter 3. Colossians 3, forgiveness is a command. Colossians 3.12 says, Therefore, as the elect of God, we talked about that last week, okay? The sovereignty of God. God chose us, all right? It was God who elected us. It's God who loves us. Holy and beloved. Two things there that we need to be as Christians. Because God is holy, we need to be holy, okay? We need to be holy, and God is holy, and, and we are beloved. We know how much God loves us. And I spoke about that on Wednesday night. Now here it is. Put on. Okay? Being clothed with Christ is another way to put this. Tender mercies. There's nine characteristics here we as Christians should have in our life. Nine characteristics. Tender mercies. Why mercy? Because God gave you mercy. All right, if it wasn't for the mercy of God, folks, we would not be saved. So put on tender mercies, kindness. All right, that's just being nice. Okay, being nice. Be kind to people. Be humble. Be humble. Jesus himself was the most humble person that ever lived. All right, he left the abode of heaven to die on a cross for you and I. Meekness. And a lot of people think meekness is weakness. But it's power under control. Okay, it's being in control of your emotions. It's being in control of the situation. I've even heard some people say, well, they're not going to walk all over me. Well, folks, we need to be meek in what we do. Long-suffering, patience, patience. Verse 13, bearing one another, okay, giving people the benefit of the doubt. Folks, people make mistakes. We make mistakes. Everyone, nobody's right every time. There's no way, okay? But you have to uh, put the emotions to the side. You have to uh, give people, uh, you know, the benefit of the doubt and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Here's the words where I say it's a commandment. Forgiveness is a commandment. Why? Because it says you must do. And then verse 14, but above all these things, 
put on love. Folks, love is the key. Love is the key. We are, uh, you know, recipients of God's grace, and we need to give grace to others. God has forgiven us, so we need to forgive others and do it in love, which is the bond of perfection. And again, nobody's perfect. That's not what he's talking about. He is talking about spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity. We need to be the bigger person. Okay? We need to be able to say, I was wrong. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And I'm telling you, that's hard to get out of people's mouths. Some people may have watched Happy Days too much uh, because of Fonzie. One episode, what does he say? He did something wrong and he was trying to tell somebody, I was I was and he could just never get it out of his mouth. Okay? I'm going to help you today, okay? Say this with me. I was wrong. Say it again. I was wrong. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And the Bible says in verse 15, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Folks, that's what everybody is looking for, is the peace of God. There's two things you will not have in your life if you cannot forgive. One is the peace of God, and the other is true joy in your life. I'm not saying you can't have some peace, but true joy, true peace, you will struggle with which you were called into one body. Folks, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. There should be no situation where we can't figure it out or work it out or make it work. In verse 15, uh, the rest of that, excuse me, and be thankful. We need to be thankful. Folks, forgiveness is the only way to find true peace and joy in our hearts. Matthew chapter 6. I want you to see the Lord's Prayer and see how important this is. The Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. In this manner, therefore, we pray. This is Jesus' words. Okay? And, and by the way, I want to say more than half of the Lord's Prayer deals with forgiveness. More than half of it. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Here it is. Your will be done. Do you think it's God's will for you to, to be angry at someone? Do you think it's God's will for us to gossip about people? Do you think it's God's will for us to be bitter about people? Folks, I'm telling you, the, the key to getting God's will done is you, we have to bathe it in prayer. Here's what I found out personally. I cannot truly pray for a person that I'm mad at. I may utter the words, but sincere and true prayer is so important. And I'm telling you, it is God's will for us to be united and in one accord. For your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And here it starts, and forgive us our debts. Okay, folks, it's not talking about money debts here, even though that is probably a good thing. You, you need to take care of your debts. Folks, we cannot repay God or Jesus for what they have done for us. They gave their life. They love us unconditionally. They love us when we are not acting right, when we're not doing the right thing, when we don't say the right thing. So, Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. There are people that have done us wrong. And I'm telling you, uh, sometimes what the hang-up is, is you're just waiting for apology. And there are times, people, folks, I'm telling you, they are not going to apologize. You're not going to see it. It will not come out of their mouth. And what they do is they hold you hostage while they just go about like, like nothing is going on in our lives. Folks, the peace of God is important. And this is what the Lord's Prayer is about. As we forgive our debtors, do not lead us into temptation. All right, we, we face temptations of bitterness and hate and envy 
and all kinds of things that go, go around when, when somebody has done us wrong. But deliver us from the evil one. Do you know what Satan wants? He wants your life just chaos. He wants your life, uh, you know, not happy. He wants your life, uh, he always wants to put wedges between relationships. Sometimes it's husband and wife. Sometimes it's uh, parents and children. Sometimes it's, it's, it's children and, and you know, uh, others just, you know, on the playground, anything, Lord. He will do anything. All right? For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Folks, we can overcome this. My Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can. Now look at verse 14. For if you forgive men of their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. And again, it's not a bargaining tool with God. It's simply saying because God has forgiven you, you need to forgive others. God is our example. Jesus is our example. And then it says, but if you do not forgive men of their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And folks, I believe some people miss the blessings of God because they will not forgive others. They've dug in. They've made up their mind. They're not moving. They're not changing. They're going to do it their way. And folks, half of the Lord's Prayer talks about forgiveness. So we see forgiveness is a command. Not only is forgiveness a command, forgiveness is letting the hurt go. Letting the hurt go. And I'm telling you what, there are some people, I'm telling you, they lay in bed at night thinking about things. They lose sleep over it. They pop in tums and all kinds of sleep aids and all kinds of things because they will not let that bitterness go. And folks, I am telling you, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Forgiveness is letting hurt go. Look at uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. Ephesians 4, 25. Therefore, put away lying. You, I hope you understand that all relationships are are built on truth. Truth and trust. All relationships are built on true truth and trust. And when it says put away lying, folks, sometimes we lie to ourselves. We'll say, oh, that's the only problem I have. Well, I'm guessing it's probably not. We all have issues, folks. Let's be honest here. But we lie to ourselves about things, and then we lie to others. We lie to others. Someone will ask you and they'll say, hey, are you mad at me? Nope, I'm not mad at you. Folks, people can tell. When you ignore people, when you won't talk to people, when you're short with people, people can tell. And so we do not need to lie. And in in just, a, just a few minutes, I'm going to show you what we need to do about differences, some differences that we have. Therefore put away lying, let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members one with another. Folks, brothers and sisters uh, in Christ need to get along. We may not agree on everything, but even at that, we can agree to disagree and to move on. There are a lot of things uh, that people don't see eye to eye on, but to just express your opinion and then let it go. I tell you, social media has went nuts. Some people, they, they just do their dirty laundry all over Facebook and Twitter and all those things going on. Folks, we as Christians should not be doing that. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. Verse 26, be angry and do not sin. God has righteous anger. God has righteous anger. And, and when Jesus, matter of fact, I've had several people say, you know, that I've been witnessing too well. Jesus was mad when he went in the temple and he had that whip and he was overthrowing tables. Well, folks, his house was a house of prayer and he was basically cleaning house is what he was doing. It was righteous anger. And do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Let me give you a key, husband and wife. 
Do not have disagreements at night. All right? Because you go to bed, and, and I'm telling you one thing I told Lori, I'm not sleeping on the couch, okay? That, half of that bed is mine. All right? And we have learned before we go to bed, I'm telling you, get things right with each other and right with the Lord. I heard a pastor one time, or actually it was an evangelist that said, me and my wife has not had an argument in 17 years. And we were in a church house. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, maybe 17 days? <laughs> you know? <laughs> we're going to have arguments. And sometimes the people we are closer to, we hurt more than we would others. Folks, you have to watch what you say. You have to understand words that are said cannot be taken back. But here's what happens when we are stewing and not talking to one another. That's when that smoldering fires of resentment and hate and revenge come in. Folks, we have to settle things every night, every night, every night, every night before I go to bed. I ask myself three things. And if you've been here more than two years, you know what I'm fixing to say. Am I right with God? That's the first thing I ask. And I don't move on until I answer that question. Am I right with my family? Am I right with my fellow man? And those three things, folks, are so important. And look what it says. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Folks, we cannot have those uh, feelings of resentment and anger in our, in our homes and in our relationships. It also says, verse 28, let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hand what is good, that he may some, have something to give to him who has need. Working, part of that is, is physical labor, folks, but it also, you have to work things out. There is a solution to every problem in life. It is found in the Word of God. And the reason, and, and, and you know, working is good so that you can have money. When you see a need, when God says, give somebody some money, you can do that. That's working, but folks, it, to me it's even harder to work things out sometimes. And it, we have to do that. Look at verse 29. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for that necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Oh, parents, be careful what you say in front of your kids. I'm telling you, if you are married, you should not say the word divorce in front of them. You, you, you are putting seeds in their minds. Folks, they need that thought of stability and love. Our words are so important. They're so powerful. James chapter 3 talks about uh, that our tongue can be a fire. Folks, be careful what you say and who you say it to and how you say it. Verse 30, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed from the day of redemption. Folks, I believe this lack of forgiveness is one way we grieve the Holy Spirit. Folks, I'm telling you, God, I'm, I'm, I mean, there's just so much Scripture. Even today, there's so much Scripture that we're going to cover because the Bible is clear, folks. We need to uh, forgive others. And, and it grieves the Holy Spirit when we're not talking to someone or we don't like someone or we treat someone unfair or we're biased. We need to uh, you know, uh, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now look at verse 31. And let all bitterness, wrath, anger, and clamor. Notice the, you know, the, the, uh, you know, the progress of these sins. First it just starts with bitterness. Then it's wrath. Then it's anger. Just think about Cain and Abel. What did the first death in the Bible come from? Jealousy. Just jealousy and anger. And, and Cain... Uh, killed his brother. Then we see 
Uh, next is clamor. That's, you know, uh, just talking, you know, just gossiping. Uh, just trying to get people on your side. Just telling everybody that you know. And evil speaking of what be put away with all malice. Malice is that need to get even. Need to get even. Folks, we don't need to do that. Now, I say all that to get to verse 32. And be kind to one another. That's that word again, kind. Tender-hearted. Tender-hearted. Okay? That's compassion, folks. That's love. Forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Now turn to Matthew chapter 18 with me, if you would. Matthew chapter 18. I want you to look in verse 15. And this is dealing with someone you have a disagreement with. And folks, also, you know, there, there's been times, you know, I may have said something and somebody got upset at me and I didn't even know they were upset. Nobody, I mean, they went on for days and weeks and sometimes months and didn't say anything. And when they told me, you know, it was one of those things, I didn't even realize that I hurt your feelings. Okay, and that's what I'm saying. If we will nip it, if we will just right then, the longer you let things go, the worse it becomes in your mind. Verse 15, moreover, if your brother sins against you, folks, it's going to happen. It's going to happen in families and in marriages and in friendships. Go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. Many, many times a person can just go to that person, not tell anybody, not picking sides, you know, not writing anonymous letters. Folks, I, I hate anonymous letters. Sign your name if you're going to send it. How can I correct something? How can I fix something if it's just anonymous? Tell him your fault and go to him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. Folks, it's not a thing of being right. It's not a thing of getting your way. Folks, it's a thing of restoring a fellowship. Restoring a fellowship. I'm telling you, even today, folks, I don't want any of you upset with me. But I can't fix it if you won't come to me and just say, hey, have you thought of this? or have, Is this what? And a lot of times it's what someone says and they take it different from what the person meant. That's why going to them one-on-one -on -one is so important. And I'm telling you, most of the time, if you will sit down in a room with them, with Christian values and bathe in prayer, you can work these things out. But if that does not work, verse 16 says, but he will not hear uh, and take, you with one or, take with you one or two uh, by the mouth of two or three witnesses that every word may be established if you can't work it out get some godly folks get some people that are not going to take sides get someone uh, not necessarily a judge but someone who is mature and older and is full of wisdom and go with them and try to work it out and then verse 17 says and if he refuses to hear them tell it to the church but if he refuses to hear the church let him uh, be uh, like a heathen and a tax collector. Folks, there are some times that it just will not work out. One person is not budging. They're not moving. They've got an attitude. They're being ugly about it. And folks, there's a word here that we just don't hear anymore. When I was a kid, I heard this word, but I have not heard it lately. And that word is church discipline. It tears up the body of Christ. And folks, we don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. Now skip down to verse 21. Verse 21. Then Peter came to him and said, and he's talking to Jesus, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? <laughs> you know how Peter is. <laughs> I'm sure Peter was never wrong about anything. All right. But Peter heard this, you know, dissertation and this, sermon from Jesus, because these are all Jesus' words, folks, that I just spoke to you and I just read. These are Jesus' words, not mine. Okay? And, and Peter was just thinking in his mind, okay, how many times have I got to do this? 
And it says, up to seven times. You know what Peter thought in his mind? Man, that's a lot. Seven is a lot. Matter of fact, even the rabbis of this day, I read this this week, they will tell you in the rabbis of the day, you only have to do it three times. Okay? It's kind of like evangelists. I don't know why we had a lot of evangelists at my church when I was growing up. And I had another evangelist that said one guy uh, went up to me and he basically said to this evangelist, I really don't like you. I just don't like you. Why? I don't know. I just don't like you. You know? And he said, what are you going to do if I just slap you on the cheek? What was he saying? He was trying to quote scripture. He's trying to get this guy. And you know what the guy said? I'm going to let you slap me on one side. Then what are you going to do? He said, if you slap me the second, I'll beat the dickens out of you if you slap me the second time. <laughs> I don't think that is a right interpretation of what Jesus is saying. Okay? What does it take? What does it take to take that? Folks, Jesus did exactly that. You remember His trial? You remember His beatings? Jesus did exactly that. And so I'm simply saying, you can lose your testimony in a fit of rage. In seconds by what we say and by our actions. So Jesus said unto him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. I'm pretty sure there were no calculators in that day. But in Peter's mind, he's thinking, 490 times? Are you kidding me? What is he really saying? What's Jesus saying? Don't keep count. Don't keep track of what's going on. Don't keep track. And let me tell you why. Because folks, the Bible says God will take care of that person. If not in this life today, it could be in the hereafter. Some people who claim to be Christian may not be Christian folks. All right, They may not. But that's God's business. We have no right to judge and to say that other people are lost. We don't. We just need to let God take care of things. Romans chapter 12. Romans 12, verse 17. Romans 12, 17. I don't know how plainer this can get. Paul was writing uh, to, to the Romans, the book of Romans. Repay no one evil for evil. Folks, that's what the world does. If somebody does you wrong, you can do them wrong. If somebody steals from you, you can steal from them. If somebody hits you, you can hit them. All right? Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. Folks, we need to be peacemakers. We need to show God's love. We need to be a reflection of God's love. We need to be a reflection of a reflection of those nine characteristics that we have read earlier. And look what it says. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Well, it is possible. My Bible says all things are possible with God. You can do it. But folks, you have to be determined. Forgiveness is a process. It is a process. As much depends on you. It may totally depend on you. That other person may not care. That may, other person may never apologize. That puts it up to you. And live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give, pla but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. See, what happens is if God doesn't react or take some action right away, you, you're thinking, well, that's not fair. That's not fair. Okay, I'm going to have to take this into my own hands. I've, I've got to get this settled. Folks, I'm just telling you, that's what patience is, folks. It's waiting on God. That's what wisdom is, not saying what's on your mind. Folks, I had somebody tell me, and I've heard it more than one time, if you think it, you need to say it. I'm telling you, as your pastor, don't do that. Because if you think it, it's between you and God. If you say it, it's between you and everyone that heard what you said. Everyone. Folks, I don't think we understand how much we influence others. 
how much we influence others. I do not want to become a stumbling block to others. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him drink. Why? Why feed him? Because that's what Jesus would do. Why give him drink? Because that's the, the basic needs of man, folks. That's what Jesus would do. For in doing, uh, for in doing so, you will heap coals of fire on his head. <laughs> I heard a man one time say, I'm going to try that. I'm just getting me some coals and just chunk it right on this guy's head. All right. No, that is not what he was saying. He was saying that that person eventually would probably feel bad about what they say because you did not react. You were not ugly. Matter of fact, uh, you know, you reacted the way Jesus would act. And in verse 21, do not overcome, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Oh, folks, we need to be good. We need to do the right thing. The right thing. So we see forgiveness is a command. Forgiveness is letting the hurt go. And folks, I know it's sometimes it's the hardest thing to do. Letting it go is the hardest thing to do, but it is an important part of your life and healing. Forgiveness is truly redemption. Go with me to uh, Luke 15. Luke 15. And you know the story of Luke 15. I'm not going to go all the way through it. It is of the prodigal son. You know, young guy, whippersnapper, thought he knew everything. Uh, thought, you know, he, you know, you know, his, he was smarter than his father. And he just said, Dad, give me my money. I want my money right now. I don't want to wait till you die. I want it right now. Well, the father, and again, I understand, you know, not everybody would do the same thing, but he gave him his inheritance. He went away and he basically wasted it partying and drinking and acting like an idiot. And he comes and he has to get a job because the money runs out and he's slopping pigs for a living. And he got so hungry one day that he looked in that bucket of slop and said, you know, this is looking pretty good right now. Folks, I'm telling you, God can get your attention. He can get your attention. And then he thought to himself, man, this is crazy. I had a job. I had a family. I had a place to lay my head. I had a place where people love me. I'm just going to go back to my father's house and I'm just going to tell him. And he, he rehearsed it. I'm telling you, all the way home, he rehearsed what he was going to say to his father. And let's pick up in verse 17. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my servants? And I, uh, let's keep going. I will rise and go to my father's house and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no, wor no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. You know what that is called? It's called humility, folks. God humbled that young man. And when he arose, he came to his father. But when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. And he ran and fell on his neck and he kissed him. I'm thinking every day this father, every day this son was gone, this father would get up and he would look down the road and say, could today be the day? Could today be the day? And he waited and he ran. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your side and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Folks, this is true forgiveness and unconditional love. That son did not deserve that. That son in the world's mind did him wrong. And he should have just made him a hard hand. And he didn't tell him, listen, if you'll take a bath, if you'll get a haircut, all right, if you'll get some clean clothes, and if you'll follow my rules, I'll let you live with the servants. No, that father had mercy on his son. Folks, this is a picture of redemption. This is a picture of of what God does for us. We are not worthy to go to heaven. We are not worthy uh, to be a child of the King. But redemption is what you are trying to get to when things go bad, when, when it's hard to forgive. Redemption is the key. But the Father, verse 22, said to His servants, bring out the best robes and put it on Him. And put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive. He was lost and he is found. 
and they begin to be merry. You want to be happy again. You want to have that joy again. You want to have that, that, you know, just bubbling inside again. Just forgive, folks. Just forgive. Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31, verse 33. Jeremiah 31, 33. And really, I just want to get to 34. Verse 34. It says, For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. Your sin was erased as far as the east is from the west when you got saved, folks. God's not going to bring it up again. He's not going to bring it up. That is the example that God gives us. Then in Luke 23, 23, Luke 23, we know Jesus is on the cross. We know that there are two criminals with Him. But notice the line in verse 34. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Folks, Jesus had done nothing wrong. Jesus was totally innocent of every accusation against Him. They beat Him. They spit on Him. They punched Him in the face. They lied in a crowd and in a court. They lied. But yet, the ultimate forgiveness is Jesus Christ. If He forgives us, folks, we need to forgive others. Corey Tim Boom, one of the great missionaries, uh, said this, to call yourself a Christian, you don't have to forgive. But to be Christ-like, you must forgive. For Christmas, I got a gift card from one of our church members, and it was to Solid Rock. And I was looking for a specific book because I'd just slowly heard a few people say and they've read this book and it helped them very, very much. And listen to this. When I went in, there was none on the shelves. And they said they've run out three times. Three times they run out. And then the lady thought, now wait a minute, somebody brought one back and I saw it sitting in the back storage. She went and got that book. And I read that book in three nights, folks. Three nights. And the title of the book, and I, I recommend you get this, is Forgiving What You Can't Forget. Forgiving. I challenge you. I beg you to read this book. Forgiving What You Can't Forget by Lisa L-Y-S-A Turk, Turkhurst T-E-R-K-E-U-S-T R-S-T Let me say it again. L-Y-S-A Lisa T-E-R-K-E-U-R-S-T And I'm telling you the story of her life the story of what she went through the story of what she did to forgive is absolutely incredible. Incredible. Let me give you a couple of quotes from this book. Hurting people hurt others. Hurting people hurt others. The more pain consumes us, the more it will control us. We do not serve a do-nothing God. There are people who think God's doing nothing, but folks, God is always up to something. God is always with us. Those who cooperate with forgiveness will see and experience the beauty of redemption. Forgiveness is both a decision and a process. We cannot change what hurt us, but we can choose uh, to not let it define us. Last scripture, Matthew 5, and I'm through. Matthew 5. Matthew 5, verse 23. Matthew 5.23 Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, the Bible says, leave, well, uh, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come to offer, come and offer your gift. Folks, God was serious about it. He's saying, this is how important it is. Forgiveness is more important than that offering that you are giving. That is important, folks. We need to be right with God. We need to be right with our family. We need to be right with our fellow man. Father, thank You for this day. And God, I thank You for forgiveness. 
And God, You know my heart. You know I mean this when I say this. If I have hurt anybody in this building, I pray that they would talk to me this week. Just call me or just come by. Lord, I don't want anybody upset. I want to be right with You and I want to be right with my family and I want to be right with my fellow man. And God, I thank You for the ultimate forgiveness. The ultimate forgiveness. You forgave us of our sins. God, if there's one here that doesn't know You, I pray today would be the day of salvation. God, if somebody needs to join the church or come for baptism or even move the church letter, Lord, I just I rededicate their life, Lord. Whatever needs to happen, God, we give You this invitation and we give You this time. God, we love You. I, I thank You for Your Word. God, this is not my opinion. Lord, I'm just a messenger. And God, You spoke to me so much about this topic. About how you can be free. You can be burden free if we will take the first step. So God, I pray it be so in our lives and in our hearts, in our relationships and in our families. God, this is your time. God, I pray you do with it what you choose. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come? We thank you for joining this morning at Rye Hill Baptist Church, and may God richly bless you.